Hey there, grocery prices have been at an all time high recently, so I've been trying to cut back on my grocery budget. Today I'm going to be showing you five new dinners that you can make for only about $5 or less. I know all of these meals are super duper cheap, but they're not lacking in flavor. They are nutrient rich and your entire family will love them. So I hope you can find this video helpful and let's go get started. I'm so excited to share this first recipe with you today. We are making this cheesy manicotti. And while I'm at the grocery store, I do want to show you the products that I picked up to stay right around $5. I first headed down the pasta aisle and I picked up this box of manicotti. Manicotti is a little bit more expensive than regular pasta, but trust me, it's worth it for this recipe. Now I'm grabbing this can of pasta sauce. This Hunt's pasta sauce is a lot cheaper than regular jarred pasta sauce at my store. Then I grabbed a container of ricotta cheese. Ricotta is super high in calcium, so it's actually pretty good for you. Now I'm grabbing a block of mozzarella cheese. Let's head back to my house and get cooking. To this pot of boiling water, I'm adding in all of my manicotti shells right here, and I'm going to cook them according to the box instructions. While we have that cooking away, I am going to shred up half of our block of mozzarella cheese. And since I am only using half of this block, I'm going to stick the other half of the block in my fridge just for future recipes. And this is quite a bit of cheese, you know, we're just using half of that block, so that cheese does go pretty far. And into this big bowl, I added my container of ricotta cheese along with half of the cheese that we shredded up. Next, add in a tablespoon of minced garlic and our seasonings, a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper, a teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. Give this a really good stir. Now that this is well combined, I do want to show you a little trick that helps me fill my manicotti shells. I just grab a Ziploc bag and I fill it with that ricotta cheese mixture. And then once the bag's filled up, I zip it up and then cut a little hole in the corner. And then there you go. It will really help you as you'll see in just a moment. But I have my 9x13 baking dish. I sprayed it with nonstick spray. Then I'm going to add half of our jar of pasta sauce down and spread that pasta sauce all on the bottom of your pan and I have our manicotti shells right here that I strained. Just fill those shells with that ricotta cheese mixture just like this. Don't worry if some of the shells overlap. Go ahead and pour the remaining pasta sauce all over the top and spread it out. Then you're going to sprinkle the top with the remaining mozzarella cheese. This will bake in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. Here's what dinner looks like. This meal is so flavorful and so good. It's also a meatless meal, and in my opinion, you will not be missing the meat just because that ricotta cheese is so high in protein. It's also super high in vitamin B12, so it really is pretty good for you. I also serve this with a side salad with some toppings that I had on hand. My family loves this dinner. Now we're making this white bean and spinach soup. So while I'm at the store, the first thing I'm going to grab is an onion. And typically yellow onions are the least expensive onion at the store. But today I looked over at the white onions and they were actually the same price as the yellow onions. And I just grabbed a white onion. We like how the white onion has a little bit sweeter flavor. It's high in fiber and super anti-inflammatory. So I put that in my cart. The next thing I'm going to be grabbing is a can of cantalini beans. After I put those cannellini beans in my cart, I grabbed a can of petite diced tomatoes. This is the big can of diced tomatoes. It's about 28 ounces. And the last thing we are going to be grabbing is a bag of frozen spinach. This frozen spinach has 12 ounces of spinach in it. There's a ton of spinach in this bag for only a dollar and 12 cents. So it really is a really great value. So back over to my house, I'm just going to dice up our onion and over to 
to my pot on the stove, I'm adding in about a tablespoon of olive oil. Once my oil's hot, I added the onion right in there. I'm going to cook the onion for a couple of minutes just to soften it. Once the onion gets nice and soft, I added in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Give this a stir, let the garlic become fragrant and only takes about 10 seconds. Now add in a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of oregano, and then one of these bouillon cubes. I like to keep these on hand and they go really far in recipes. Like I'm just using one for this specific recipe. It's kind of like a substitute for chicken broth. Then I added in six cups of water along with our cantalini beans and our big can of petite diced tomatoes. The last thing I'm adding in is our bag of frozen spinach. And if you're not the biggest fan of spinach in the world, you don't have to add this big bag in. You could use half the bag or a quarter of this bag, but we really like spinach and spinach is super high in iron. I'm going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes on low. After that cooking time is up, this is ready to serve. Here's what my bowl of soup looks like. I topped mine with some of that mozzarella cheese I had on hand, but you don't have to if you don't want to. This soup is extremely delicious. Those beans are high in fiber and protein. The spinach is great for your immune system, and those diced tomatoes are surprisingly great for your skin. Now we're making this enchilada casserole and this one brings back so many memories. It's a family favorite for sure. There was a time period when we really couldn't hardly afford groceries. We were on food stamps and when I would make this dinner, it was kind of like the grand dinner. We would get so excited about it and we just loved it so much. I first grabbed a can of pinto beans. Next, I grabbed a can of black beans. Both of those cans are under a dollar each. Now I'm grabbing a can of corn. I know a lot of different foods have really gone up in price, but here in Utah, corn has really stayed the same price over time. Now I'm grabbing a can of enchilada sauce. Over the years, I found that this is the best priced brand in my area. The last thing I'm grabbing is a bag of corn tortillas. I definitely suggest you grabbing corn tortillas over flour tortillas, just because corn tortillas hold up best when baking. Let's head back to my house and get started. To this medium-sized bowl, I'm adding in a tablespoon of minced garlic. Next, add in our drained can of corn. Then add in our pinto beans. I did drain and rinse these pinto beans and our can of black beans as well. Then we're going to add in our seasonings. This is what's really going to give this flavor. A teaspoon of cumin, teaspoon of onion and garlic powder, and then a half a teaspoon of pepper. Give this a really good stir. I have my 9 by 13 baking dish right here. I'm spraying it with plenty of nonstick spray. Then I'm adding in half of our can of enchilada sauce. Spread that out just so it's covering the bottom of the pan. Then you're going to add about six corn tortillas down at the bottom of your pan. Over the corn tortillas, go ahead and add about half of that bean mixture that we made up. Over the bean mixture, you are going to add about six more corn tortillas. You could always add more or less corn tortillas to depending on if you like a lot or a little bit of them. Then over the top, add the remaining bean mixture and the rest of the can of enchilada sauce. This is completely optional, but I did have a little bit of some Mexican style cheese on hand that I wanted to use. So I sprinkled that over the top, but if you don't have cheese, you don't have to add it. This baked on 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. Top this with your favorite toppings. We topped ours with avocado, sour cream, and tomatoes. But if you don't have any toppings on hand, I totally understand. This casserole is also good alone. You don't have to top it with anything. It's super full of flavor. And like I said, my family loves it. Now we're making this lentil spaghetti, and before you go judging this recipe, give it a chance. I headed down the bean and rice aisle, and I grabbed a bag of lentils. This whole bag is $1.34, and I didn't even use half the bag. I only used a half a cup of it, so this is very affordable. Lentils are also considered a superfood. Next, I'm grabbing another can of spaghetti sauce. I'm just grabbing the garlic and herb flavor right now. Then we're going to go head over to the spaghetti 
spaghetti noodles and I did grab a bag of these spaghetti noodles for under a dollar. Now let's head over to the frozen vegetables and I grabbed a bag of this zucchini blend. I have been craving like zucchini and squash recently so this is why I grabbed this bag but you could use any type of frozen vegetables you like for this recipe. Let's head back to my house now and get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is cleaning and rinsing our half a cup of lentils. So I just have my over the sink strainer right here. I'm just adding the lentils and I'm going to rinse them and kind of sort through them. Since lentils are grown in the ground, you might find like a little pebble in there. So just look through them. I just found like a little bit of dirt, but after I was through cleaning our lentils, I brought them over to the large pot on my stove and I added them right in there. Next, you're going to be adding in about two cups of water or you could use broth if you'd like for more flavor. Now I added in a bay leaf along with a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Give this a stir and let this simmer covered for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the lentils become tender. You do wanna stir it occasionally while it's simmering, but then I started boiling up our spaghetti noodles in another pot. Now that my lentils are nice and tender, I remove the lid and I'm removing the bay leaf in there and I'm going to let this simmer uncovered for a couple of minutes just to absorb the liquid. Now I'm adding in our bag of frozen zucchini and squash along with our can of pasta sauce. Now I'm going to give this a really good stir and let this simmer for about five to ten minutes. While this was simmering, I did stir it occasionally so nothing stuck to the bottom of my pot, but once the simmering time was up, I just added my drained spaghetti into the pot. I'm going to give this a stir and then it is time to serve it up. And here's what dinner looks like. If you don't typically cook with lentils, you need to start cooking with them more often. I like to think of them as kind of like a powerhouse of nutrition. They're high in potassium, fiber, and folate. They're also super budget friendly. Now we're making this one pan red beans and rice dinner. The first thing we're going to be grabbing is a package of kielbasa sausage. You could grab any type of sausage you like, but do pay attention to the price per ounce. As you see this brand, it's about 30.7 cents per ounce. I looked around to see if I could find any cheaper and I did. I found this brand It is only 24.8 cents per ounce. So we do have quite a bit of savings just getting that brand. And next, we're going to be grabbing a big package of red beans and rice. My family really likes this dinner, so that's why I grabbed the family size box. Let's head back to my house and get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is slicing our sausage into half moons, just like this. And I do want to let you know, if you don't want to use sausage for this recipe, you could always use ground beef, ground chicken, or ground turkey as a substitute. I brought my sausage over to the pan on my stove. I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil in there. We are just going to brown the sausage on both sides. This is going to create a lot of added flavor. Now we're going to add in about three cups of water along with our package of red beans and rice. After you add that in, give this a really good stir and scrape all those flavorful bits off the bottom of the pan. Simmer this covered for about 25 minutes. You do want to stir this often while it's simmering just so nothing sticks to the bottom of your pan. This dinner comes together in no time at all and has such minimal ingredients. We like to top ours with cheese and tomatoes. And if you don't know this yet, I have a special email group. I love sending out exclusive recipes, cooking tips, and tricks to that group. So if you're not in that group yet, you need to join. I'll put where you could join in the comment section of this video. It's completely free and I would love to have you there. I have so many more $5 dinner videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. I'll see you there. Bye for now.